Carly, you old miserable, messy bitch. You know when got all that stuff started at your home girl event. Then gonna have the nerve to act like you're gonna take off your coat and do something. Girl, you gonna sit your old ass down somewhere. <laughs> It's your favorite, favorite Auntie Momo, and I am back for the season finale, y'all. This is the season finale to Love and Hip Hop Atlanta, season nine, episode nine. We can't even get an even Stevens after shit, but Rona done shut every goddamn thing down. Look at y'all. First of all, regular church announcements. If you have not done so just yet, go ahead and subscribe to my channel. Let me know you stopped by. Give me a thumbs up, and then make sure your notification bells are turned on. Y'all look here. I just woke up from this good ass snap. And I have no intentions of doing my hair and my makeup. I put a little something, something on my lip. But look here, y'all. Work kicked my ass today. Mother Nature was on some bullshit today. I mean, it rained. It poured. It was pissing down all damn day today. Clothes drenched. Shoes, socks drenched. Hair looking like... Fre why? This why I'm on here looking like Frederick Douglass right goddamn now. Because the rain just done fucked up my head, child. You know if you've been out somewhere, you've been in the sun or something, or you just been... And I wasn't even in the sun, girl. I was in a pouring down rain all day today. Got rained the hell on. I came home and I was exhausted. I wouldn't do nothing but get in my bed, Lord. I felt like a five-year-old that just got their ass whooped. And so I was stuttering, stutter crying and shit. And so I just had to get in bed, child. I came home, I took a shower, got my ass in the bed. I just woke up. And realize, oh shit, I said I was going to get this review out tonight. So y'all, y'all work with me now. Work with me now. Blame it on rain. Okay? But I'm, I'm, <laughs> bitch, this is natural as it come right here. I just got a little something, something on my eye. You know, I need, nigga need their eyebrows so you can see what I'm thinking and shit. But yeah. This how we going to do it. So y'all don't give me no shit now. Don't give me no shit. But look here. This season finale of Love and Hip Hop had Atlanta went down. Okay? It went down. It was good. This episode was very much appreciated, although I'd appreciated it more if both Akbar and Carly Wed, Carly Wed, <laughs> Carly Red would have got flow mop with their goddamn ass. Y'all can't stand now one of them. So look here, hopefully y'all are ready for this review. Because I'm ready to give it. See, I ain't got no liquor tonight, y'all. I'm tired. I'm ready to give y'all this review so I can get my ass back up in this bed. So let's go and get on up into it, y'all. So y'all, Rona done hit ATL, shawty. They are preparing for a possible shutdown. Now, you know that they're trying to um, film everything in real time now. So this is when the pandemic had just hit. Everybody was sort of in a, in a frenzy and a panic. Niggas out buying all the goddamn tissue and, and soap and shit all that up. So this is when it first hit, right? Now, I felt at, um, Akbar when Akbar was like, look here, I'm not prepared to homeschool my kids. I don't know nothing about what they got them teaching these kids. The shit they teach them now ain't regular shit that they used to teach us. I'm sorry, but it's not. I ain't trying to help my baby with his homeschooling shit. And I'll be like, what the? This second, gear, this second grade work? Shit. Bitch, I don't know this shit. So I feel her completely when she was saying that. Um... Spice is getting ready for this event that she's having faces and laces. Now... Y'all know everybody want to do makeup and everybody want to do some goddamn wigs. I feel like you have to have a certain, like, something about it has to pop and it has to stick out. You know what I'm saying? Like, for example, y'all already know I love my little chocolate girl wigs. Chai, she the one that sent me a little lip gloss. I love that lip gloss. Even though it's super simple, I love that lip. I don't know what it is. It just stays on. It makes my lips moisturize. And, like, she does her own custom wigs. Chai, them look like some goddamn wigs that Spice had in her closet from her last couple of concerts. Didn't them, none, 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 uh. Didn't none of it look like nothing I would want to go buy. I don't wear no lace fronts as it is. But if I did, bitch, I don't want that. It don't look cute. Akbar goes to see Sierra so she, um, Sierra can fix her little lace front or whatever, right? Child, as soon as Akbar come in, Sierra start lights on that whole day. I don't blame you. 
Between my sister, my niece, and my nephew, come visit me. I don't need y'all to sanitize that ass. Ain't nobody got time for that goddamn shit over here. Shit. Now, Sierra says that her son has asthma. Ain't nobody got time for Rona because Mesa got asthma. She got... Now, was I the only one thought Sierra looked crazy as hell with no hair and that hat on with that cat suit and them boots? I was like, what the fuck is going on with this shit? She like somebody mama that get ready to come pick him up from the school, but I ain't got everything together, so I'm going to throw half this shit so I look like I know what I'm doing. But that hat, <laughs> she look like a, a therapeutic patient with that goddamn hat on. Sierra was telling Akbar about, you know, the whole situation that went on with her daughter. Now her daughter is in private school, and she likes it better now that she is in private school. She ain't got to deal with none of that bullshit that's going on no more. Hopefully that bitch ain't over there bullying them goddamn kids in that private school, because private schools don't play that goddamn shit. Now... This goddamn Sierra is telling Akbar about everything that happened at Paris's party that went on with BK. Now, she says that she now realizes whenever something happens with her and BK, it makes her realize she don't know if she misses her baby daddy or she just didn't give their relationship enough time after she found out the whole situation that happened with her assistant Mariah and her fucking around with Shooter. Now, they cut to a clip where Sierra is talking to Erica Mena and she's telling um, Erica how much she misses Shooter. Now, you see Erica's face is kind of like, ooh, sis, I don't you want to do that. You know, that nigga got a couple of bitches he fucking with. Now, look here. Side note. I don't know if this was before or after you seen the whole situation that went down with Kiyomi and Cheyenne. Because, bitch, you my homegirl. You need to let me know about all this little situation here that done went on. Especially if I'm coming and I'm telling you that I miss my baby daddy. And you know my baby daddy is out here laying alone spreading brat with these other hoes. But then again, she knows that, though. You know the nigga that you laid down and had kids with and married and all of that. You knew that shit. I didn't get the two, the correlation with that. Every time BK fuck up, that make you realize that you didn't give your marriage a chance after he cheated on you. I don't get that. Help me to understand. I don't get that, y'all. I just really don't get it. Akbar V gets to telling Sierra the whole situation with her record label. She says she feels like they say one thing, they do another thing, they're not being real and upfront with her. No, bitch, what it is, they don't want to work with your goddamn ratchet ass. They see all the goddamn bullshit you out here doing. Child, Akbar gets on my nerves. Then she going to say she sees all these less talented people that get out here and they doing this and they doing that. Bitch, because they minding their business. They minding a business that pays them is exactly what the hell that you need to goddamn do. See, why are you up here worried about what the next bitch is doing and you ain't even got your own shit together? Then she says that she has custody of all five of her kids, but only one of them live with her oldest one. Why? Is that so he can watch his damn self and you ain't got to watch him? Lord, I'm wrong. Mo, let me stop. But I'm just saying, Akbar puts off these vibes like... I just don't like Agbar. I really don't. Now, Sierra asked her, like, who are you talking about? Because I didn't see the shit that happened on the radio with whole light skin Keisha and all of this. Now, y'all remember when Jock had light skins on the radio and Agbar called in talking about she the queen of Atlanta? All this other, other oh, dumb ass shit. Now, Sierra's like, look here. I heard about what happened with you and Sierra. I mean, you and um, light skins it. I heard her music. I like her music. I've heard your music. I like your music. Why can't y'all, as two women from Atlanta, try to come together and make some shit work? At bar with this goddamn crabs in a bucket mentality. Now, see, you need to pick a side. That's why you be in all this shit. You need to pick a side. You can't be friends with her. And I got beef with this bitch. Sierra is me. Bitch, I'm not going to go around fighting everybody because you got a fucking issue with them. Your issue with them is your issue with them. Your issue with them is not all of a sudden my goddamn problem, bitch. I'm sorry. I'm set up a little bit different. I'm not finna go around and have the beefing issues with bitches because you got beefing issues with them. That ain't got shit to do with me. Unless I'm brought up in the mix some kind of way. Other than that, bitch, don't make your problem mine because that ain't my problem. Then Agbar gonna say she got proof that Light Skinted is DMing fans talking shit about her. Why the fuck do you care? So what? Get out there and make some music then, girl. And then why do you listen to what a fucking fan tells you? Really? Not down to no fans, but girl. 
The only business and the only thing you need to worry worried about is what the fuck pays you. I'm at bar is too old. She got too many kids and too many scratch marks for her to act this goddamn dumb. I, it ooh, I can't no. Child so light skinned and Coca Vanga at their house. They fussing. She fussing at him because this nigga eating up all the snacks and shit. Look here, bitch. It's quarantine time. She goes and takes all them snacks and throws them in the trash because she says she wants him to be healthy. But bitch, look here. We are in a pandemic. You better go get them goddamn honey buns and them goddamn bugles and shit out the goddamn trash can. You gonna need that shit when the clutch. Girl, you gonna need that goddamn shit. Now, um, she's saying that she's getting ready to get her hair done because she's been invited to Spice's event, the Faces and Laces event, and she knows that um, Akbar V is gonna be there, so you know, she says she got to be on her shit, make sure her hair is right and all this other bullshit. She also said that Tokyo wants her and Akbar to talk to hopefully be able to squash whatever beef that they have. Now, I completely feel light skinted. Like, I let her talk, say what she got to say. I ain't got no beef with the bitch. The bitch got a problem with me. So yes, I will sit down. I will listen to her. I will have an intelligent conversation. But the bitch want to bring it. Oh, bitch, it will get brought in. Know that. Oh, God. Y'all, so it is the night of Spice's event. Laces and Faces. I think that's a cute little clever name for an event. Her makeup is like music. Um, one of the palettes is like a piano. I think the makeup brushes are in some kind of microphone type thing. Really, really, really clever marketing tool. I'm actually going to check it out because I kind of want to purchase it. You know what I'm saying? Support. Do it for the culture or whatever, right? It's real cute. Now, she says she's also going to be performing her new song, Inches. It's produced by Shaggy. Miss Shaggy, Mr. Lava Lava. That's my guy. That shit, it wasn't me. Spice and Carly and Mimi, they sitting back talking. Carly brought um, Kiyomi to the event. Next thing you know, Akbar V and um, Alexis walk in. Alexis and Kiyomi introduce themselves to each other. They're like, I know you, but I don't know you, know you. Let's formally introduce ourselves to each other. They introduce themselves to each other. Here go Kiyomi with her old messy ass. Oh, Fetty, tell me all about you. Why, y'all already know. Alexis, the bitch get ready to fight whenever anybody bring up anything about Fetty. Y'all already know Fetty don't do shit for that goddamn beautiful ass little Lele. And she can't stand that nigga. But Kiyomi, why did you have to bring up Fetty? Wasn't nobody checking for that nigga or his eye. Why you have to bring that goddamn nigga up? But Alexis is like, look here, I don't even know this chick. I don't even know why she bringing up Fetty ass. But, you know what I'm saying? It is what it is. You know, I don't give a shit. Here go Carly Red messy ass yeah because you used to mess with mo and mo told me all kind of stuff about you so we cool we good now carly claims that she's cool on alexis but she don't trust her ass now she says that alexis lied about the ring that mo had given her supposedly alexis had said that mo had was in love with her and wanted to give that ring to her but he ended up giving that ring to carly red which i'm a little confused because she said she never messed with mo but the nigga was in love with you he wants to give you a ring I don't know. Either way it go, Carly said that her daughter picked out that ring. That Alexis didn't have shit to do with that ring. So if you're going to lie about something as petty as that, she don't want shit to do with you. And I feel you. It is what it is. But that don't give you grounds to be messy with the goddamn girl. Like... Alexis started to go in about her um her whole trafficking thing. You know, she was talking about she went through the story again, verbatim story ain't changed from when she first said it. She ran away at 15, linked up with one of her homegirls, her homegirls ended up getting into a whole house when she was out there selling pussy. She had no choice but to do that. She was locked up in the room. Niggas just came by, did what they goddamn did. Now, Carly doesn't really believe her. She gonna come out of her goddamn neck and say, oh, well, no disrespect, but Mo said he met you when you were 16. So I don't know. Bitch, Carly, why? Why? Who cares? Mo beat your ass. He don't want you. You don't want him. Why are you sitting up here throwing this, this girl's past in her damn face? Y'all, I can't fucking stand Carly. That, in turn, it upset Alexis because Alexis is like, look here, I don't play. It was hard enough for me to come out about it as it is. You basically are throwing my story up in my face, saying I'm lying, and then you want to come and tell me some shit that Mo said. Mo don't fuck with me or you, so why do you give a damn what this nigga said? Carly is so goddamn messy. She's like, yeah, girl, if I could show you all the stuff that Mo told me about you, you would be surprised. I wouldn't give a fuck. 
fuck you, fuck mo, fuck four motherfuckers that look like the both of y'all. I wouldn't goddamn give a damn. So Alexis is upset. Alexis gets up. She goes outside. She starts crying. At this point, she kind of comes in. She kind of speaking to everybody. She tries to fucking speak to Carly. But again, Carly being messy, and I was right there with Shakala. Fuck, fuck Carly. She just messy. She stupid. I don't like that hoe. She get on my goddamn nerves. So Spice ends up going outside trying to console, you know, Alexis. And it's like, well, look here. I apologize if she's acting that way. You know, come back in. Let's just try to, you know, talk. Hopefully, you know, just, just don't leave. Spice had to go out there and calm the goddamn girl down because goddamn Carly bitch ass. I can't stand that hoe. Then this is where Carly really fucking pissed me off. She's like, let's just reintroduce everybody. Hopefully so everybody can get along. Shekinah, this is Akbar. Akbar, this is Shekinah. Bitch, they know each other already. That was messy. You didn't have to do that. Shekinah's like, I know her. She know me. Same Akbar. Like, I know that bitch and that bitch know me. Now, Akbar, bitch, you, you took the baby. Carly set that shit up, but you goddamn took the bait. Here go Akbar. I don't fuck that hoe. That hoe don't fuck with me. I don't give a damn about that hoe. That hoe don't give a damn about me. She kind of, I don't know how it went left to them eating coochie. But child, the next thing you know, Akbar throws a whole drink on Shekana. For what? For what? Then they get to getting ready to tussle. Shekana is mad because... Once again, here go Akbar V on this whole bully shit. The bitch, she tries to use her weight. And there's this big bully bitch. I can't stand a big old bully bitch. I really can't. Try then, here go Carly. Y'all pissing me off. Y'all gonna make me take off my $15,000 coat. Shut up for you crack your Botox in your face, bitch. I can't stand Carly. Security ends up putting Shekinah out. The first I didn't get, I'm like, why y'all gonna put Shekinah out? Shekinah the one that, she didn't even start the shit. Akbar started the shit, but then they had to film the next goddamn scene that was coming up. So I was like, okay. So they took Shekinah outside to the parking lot. She out there in the parking lot. She pissed off. I'm mad. This bitch, Akbar beat her through a drink in my face. As she's outside, Tokyo Vanity and Light Skinted Keisha, they outside in the parking lot. Now they turned up. They on 10 because they down see the Shekinah. It's pissed off. Girl, Spice is on the inside talking to everybody, talking to goddamn Agbar. I was like, look here, bitch. You promised me you're not going to come back up my event. You come, you're going fight at my event. You said you're not going to do this shit. You're doing this shit. My event, we're going to let that bum look like shit. She like, all right, cool. I'm cool. So, girl, Spice starts performing her little song, Inches. I got inches for my bitches. It was real karaoke-ish. I'm not going to knock the bitch. You know, she did her thing. She did her thing. Whatever. So, Tokyo and Light Skin Keisha, they come in while she's performing. You know what I'm saying? They turn up, start dancing or whatever. Light Skin that goes over to the bar, get her little drink. After Spice is done performing, they all sitting and they talking. Tokyo's like, well, what happened with Shekinah? We pull up. She talking about she mad. Somebody threw a drink at her. Like, what happened? Alexis is like, look here. I don't know what's going on. It's just a bunch of drama. Life's scared to come back from the bar. Comes over and joins the rest of the ladies. She's like, look here. What's the problem? Like, what is the issue? Alexis is telling Life's scared, look, I don't know you. I don't have no problem with you. Bitch, out of nowhere. Akbar comes up and bum rushes light skin to Keisha. As she does that, baby Tokyo comes and starts bopping on her goddamn ass. Now you got an all big girl fight. Well, minus light skin Keisha, you got a girl fight. Why, once again, Akbar, why are you on this ignorant ass bully shit? It just pisses me off. So, y'all, security ends up taking Tokyo and Light Skin that outside in the parking lot with Shekinah. Now, all three of them mad. They ready to get in goddamn Ike Bar V ass. Alexis and Spice is to the side talking because Alexis is like, look at my bad. I'm trying to calm home girl down. I can't believe she tripped like this. Soon as she says that, Akbar tries to come walking up to try to say something to Alexis. Spice snaps. Spike starts, um, Spike starts to swing on Agbar. They get into a try to goddamn fight. Security takes Agbar upstairs because Agbar now, she going wild, pulling the wigs off, trying to just fuck up the whole goddamn event, child. Just stupid. 
Security takes Akbar upstairs. This bitch is hurling shit from the second floor down there. Spice is like, you want my fight? You come mess up my bitch? You won't come fight me now? God damn your bitch, you girl. Spice goes over to Mimi and Kiyomi. She walks up on Kiyomi. Yo, you want fight? Kiyomi like, bitch, I'm on your side. I ain't got shit to do with this, girl. Carly asks, what's up? Spice fighting? I'm fighting too. What's up? You know what? Carly, sit down for you crack your face, bitch. Sit down. Keisha, Tokyo, and Spice outside, goddamn going wild. Keisha gets in her car, chases at Bar and Lexus down the street, cuts her car off. Bitch, they all jump out the car, they all goddamn fighting. Of course, we can't see the thick of it, what happens, but when the camera does finally get there, we see that Agbar has Keisha kind of bent over. She got a hold of her lace. Everybody got a hold of her. Tokyo, side note, did Tokyo move a whole motherfucking Jeep? I seen the security holding her, then I seen that Jeep just move. I was like, bitch, did she move that Jeep? Goddamn, that's a big-ass goddamn girl. But, um... Child, they out there fighting in the street like some wild asses. It's just a hot ass goddamn mess, child. That was that from there. Then we have the whole scene with Shooter and he's at Frost Bistro. Kirk is there. Scrappy end up showing up with a little breathing with his little cute ass. They all in there with the gloves down, wiping down shit. Now, Scrap, the point of the gloves, baby, is for you to wear them over your shits. You don't put on gloves, then put your rings over your gloves, baby. Germs carry. That's all I'm going to say about that. But Shooter's in there telling him about the whole situation with Kiyomi and how he don't feel something right in his spirit after Cheyenne say that she done seen Kiyomi coming up out of Scrap De Leon's house with an overnight bag. So he said the whole situation with Scrap, Cheyenne, and Kiyomi is dead for right now because he don't know what the fuck is good. Chai, as they talking... Producers end up coming in. The whole wall breaks down. Producers end up coming in. Look, look here. Rona's here. Shit is real. We cut down production. That's just what it is. That's when you get that whole scene with Kirk. We're like, well, how we going to eat? How we going to pay our bills? Nigga, y'all was just on Instagram not too long ago making fun of people. Talking about, did you get your stimulus check, bitch? Did you get your stimulus check? Hmm. Look like you out here struggling with the rest of us saying that they're a, boss, a false bistro, bitch. But after that, y'all, everybody is just talking about how all the businesses are closing down. Cardi pretending to close in her shop. Bitch, we didn't even know you still had that goddamn shop. Everybody's closing down. Jock is broadcasting from the luxury of his home because the radio station is closed. Him and Kendrick, bitch, y'all ain't getting married. We don't know when shit gonna pick back up. Rona has ruined everybody's goddamn life right now. I can say that. Rona, Rona has ruined my life. It has ruined my hair. Like, this bitch ain't taking no goddamn prisoners. But again, this was the time when the pandemic first hit. They're showing everybody in the grocery stores. Niggas taking all the Tylenol, the tampons, and the dub. Shit is just going crazy. And it's to, um, what else happened? Oh, last but not least, BK's uncle died of Rona. I can't stand BK and his Beijing beard, but shout out to him and, and prayers to his family because he said his uncle was perfectly healthy. He was having trouble breathing, went into the emergency room. Bam, just like that nigga died of Rona. That's fucked up. But y'all, that's the season finale. That's it. That's all. Like so, like that. That's the end of Love and Hip Hop Atlanta. We don't even know if we're going to have no reunion show. None of that. But look here. If y'all saw the episode, if it was anything that I missed, y'all already know. Drop it down below and let me know. I'm going to get my ass back up in this bed. <laughs> Please don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and share. And your Auntie Mel will see y'all in the next video. Peace out. Elbow bump. Bam.